Hey, greetings, Maples family. Welcome to our Maples Connect here this week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, whether you're live or you're watching this later uh, recorded, thanks for checking us out tonight. We'll have a lot of good information for you. We have a great interview for you in just a few minutes. Um, uh, just really good stuff about our um, um, our lay servant school on March the 6th. We'll have Cheryl Denley, Joey, myself, and Sam. Uh, it's going to be really good. And hey, hey, greetings, Maples family. Welcome to our Maples Connect here this week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, whether you're live or you're watching this later uh, recorded, thanks for checking us out tonight. We'll have a lot of good information for you. We have a great interview for you in just a few minutes. Um, uh, just really good stuff about our um, um, our lay servant school. Hey, greetings, Maples family. Welcome to our Maples Connect here this week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, whether you're live or you're watching this later uh, recorded, thanks for checking us out tonight. We'll have a lot of good information for you. We have a great interview for you in just a few minutes. Um, uh, just really good stuff about our... Um, um, our lay servant school on March the 6th. We'll have Cheryl Denley, Joey, myself, and Sam. Uh, it's gonna be really good. And so hang around for that. A um, lot of good information, a lot of announcements tonight uh, that we need to tell you about. But did you just... say school? Did somebody say school? I did, lay servant school. I know that makes your heart beat pitter patter. Um, I, I think today's quiz should be about school. Oh, go right ahead. All right. Since we're talking about school, lay servant school, um, you know, it's that last part of go, make, baptize, and teach. But this is a fun quiz. Um, you know, I do, I do, uh, when I retired as a school teacher, you know, I didn't realize I'd become a different kind of teacher. And here I am, I'm taking three seminary classes, and I'm teaching one seminary class, and teaching disciple, teaching Sunday school, and it's just, it's my wheelhouse. All right, here we go. So, this is United Methodist School Spirit. Duke University, Duke University, which you know has a, is one of the United Methodist Seminaries, um, has a rich history. There? Say it again. How many are there? Thirteen. Yep. Yeah. Duke has a rich history of championship athletic teams. The athletic teams from Duke University have this nickname. All right. So, and let's get let's take a few seconds here. Um, they are the what? Let's go. Uh, Stephen Brennan, for those of y'all like college basketball, they've been real big in college basketball. And isn't David Cutcliffe the head football coach there, former Ole Miss coach? Yeah, he's still there. Okay. He turned them into a football program. Uh, pretty um, – no, okay. <laughs> I was trying for David Cutcliffe fans. They're better than they were. But that's true. That's all relative speaking. Well, for a while there, I didn't even know they did football. But so, anyway, they're on the map. Five, four, three, two, one. Who is Duke, Stephen? Uh, the Duke Blue Devils. They are um, the Blue Devils. Also known in the basketball circle for their Cameron Crazies, um, named after their basketball arena, the Cameron Indoor Arena, one of the great and storied locations to watch basketball. Um, mm. Yep. Nice. Not having a great year this year, though. Okay. No, they're, I guess not. not. They're not looking good. Isn't Krzyzewski, isn't that how you pronounce his name? He's still the head coach? Yeah, He's still the head coach there. Yep. Been there forever. All right, here we go. Next one. This gets tougher now. Africa University. Africa University in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is known for dramatic landscapes and diverse wildlife. What is... Actually, this is going to be multiple choice, okay? Um, which of the following is the logo of Africa University? A, the elephant. B, the acacia tree. Three, or C, the zebra. Or D, the hungry hippo. The official logo of Africa University. Elephant, acacia tree, I think that's how it's pronounced. Zebra or the hippo. The zebra. The zebra. Right. That's, that's not right, though. But uh, any ideas? I'm going to let people watching have a few seconds. Tell me about Africa University in five, four, three. Please comment down below. Two, one. 
Stephen, do you know the logo of Africa University? Yeah, the acacia tree, please. It is the acacia tree. Very good. There's beautiful no stumping. Logo. There's no stumping Stephen today. Beautiful, beautiful logo. It's a beautiful campus if you've ever been there. <clears throat> okay. This was the first, arguably the first, uh, United, Me or I'm sorry, not United, but Methodist Episcopal Seminary established by Francis Asbury and Thomas Koch. It burned down in 1796 and does not exist today. The first uh, Methodist Episcopal Seminary established by Francis Asbury and Thomas Koch. It burned down in 1796 and it does not, it is not in existence today. As a matter of fact, I'll give you, um, you know, John Wesley actually kind of um, poked fun at the, the, the way they named this, thought it was a bit pompous on both Coke and Asbury's part. Um, it, it, it makes sense, right? So um, let's take a, take a few seconds there. Stephen, you're laughing. <laughs> That's a true story. I mean, <laughs> uh, five, four, three, two, one. What is I, it? I don't know the answer to that one. That, you, you've stumped me. Oh, really? Well, let's see. Um, but I was thinking about Asbury and Coke, and um, but particularly Asbury and um, and Wesley. Wesley Wesley thought Asbury was a little full of himself. Thought he was a little pompous, a little arrogant, a little um, um, I don't know that you know he Asbury is really the one that kind of gave us the. I, the con not the concept, but gave us the title that we use for our Episcopal leaders, the bishops. Yep. And and Wesley always thought that was horrible. He wanted superintendents. He wanted uh, that's what the title he well, wanted. Well, he just thought the whole thing was <laughs> hierarchical and smacked too much of the Church of England. And he, you know, this is a guy that was the first circuit rider, and we mm -hmm. we really miss sometimes how profoundly. Um, far he went, far he rode, how, how passionate he was about God's reign and how he was just so, um, he just stripped, tried to strip, strip, strip Christianity down to the very basics and, and, and the very um, foundational mm -hmm. points. Uh, not that he was a fundamentalist, but no. really, um, this was a man that died um, having really changed the world and he lived long enough to see the beginnings of that he did um historians credit the fact of the wesleyan revival mm -hmm. the first great awakening for sparing england going through a french style revolution and the man died with one possession really the clothes on his back a horse and a spoon mm -hmm. uh, and i think a i think it's amazing i think asbury you know since he he, he did not have a formal education uh, that kind of let him relate to the people more. Did you know, and you know this, I know you know you went to Asbury. But, um, but Asbury was very passionate about education, yes. about educating the people. He was. Um, yes, he was very passionate about that. And I think part of uh, part of his psyche was that he wanted us to stand on equal footing with everyone else. Mm -hmm. so, did I know what? Go ahead. And, you know, you're, and you're absolutely right. He, um, and, you know, he traveled, and it's an estimated of 270,000 miles Mm -hmm. On horse, and, on horse, and delivered over sixteen thousand sermons his lifetime. That's that's amazing. Well, that's Francis Asbury, not not even Wesley. Right, that's Asbury. Yeah, and <clears throat> father of American Methodism. But by the way, the name of that college, which no longer exists, uh, is an amalgamation of their names, Coke and Asbury, to form what we now know as Cokesbury. Cokesbury College was the name of that uh, place, and that's why Wesley what said, was "Yeah, he's what like, was really? do what." You know where it was located? Maryland. Maryland. Okay. I, I had not read that. That's yeah. that's really interesting. Coatsbury College, because our book publishing ventures. I mean, it was always called the publishing house, but the bookstores were known as the Coatsbury bookstores. That's right. And the website's still called Coatsbury. That's right. They need a better user interface, but yes, that's awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, here is another multiple choice one. Um, Ohio Wesleyan University mm -hmm. uses a unique 
name for their sports teams. They are the, A, the Demon Deacons, B, the Excellent the excellent elders. C, the battling bishops. Or D, the purple preachers. Ohio well, Wesleyan University. They we are know either, that the D, demon deacons are Wake Forest. Wake right? Forest, right. Okay, so that eliminates that one, yeah. And we don't have deacons. And Wake Forest is from another um, faith tribe. Right. So within Christianity. Uh, which leads us to either the battling bishops, the purple preachers, or what was the third choice? The excellent elders. The excellent elders. Stephen, I consider you an excellent elder. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not athletic. <laughs> Correct answer in five, four, three, two, one. Yes, Ohio Wesleyan, OWU. They're known as the battling bishops. Yeah, that's what I was going to guess. The Battling Bishops. Well, thank you for um, uh, participating in our sports. Or uh, I'll give our... you another um, trivia for uh, mascots. What is the mascot um, of Asbury College in Wilmore, Kentucky? The sports mascot for their sport. They do have sports teams. They have a, quite a competitive baseball team. Oh, wow. I don't know that. I didn't even know that they had... Uh, what is that? Division three? Nope. I um, whatever the, the yeah, non yeah. not NCAA. They're not a member of the NCAA. Um, but they are quite competitive. Right. So they're not the circuit riders. Mm -mm. That'd be a great name though for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not the purple preachers. Mm -mm. Hmm. Although purple is their color. It is right. Hmm. You know, I was really surprised as I'm as I'm uh, learning more in American Methodism, how many revivals actually originated in Kentucky. Yeah, like that was a huge revival center. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I give up. I don't know. The Eagles, Asbury Eagles, Eagles. go Eagles! All right. They have a good um, women's softball, uh, really good soccer teams. Okay. So it's a very, very, very good private liberal arts Christian college. And did you know that up until uh, 20 years ago or so, you couldn't bring cards onto campus? Gambling. Couldn't bring cards onto campus. No, no dancing, no playing cards. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. That's something else. Thank yeah, y'all for. Interesting. Thank y'all for participating. Uh, Stephen, would you open us up with prayer and then we'll get to our interview? Father God, we come to you right now and we invite you into this space as you speak to us tonight. We thank you for all our friends that are gathered here and those that will be gathered um, in the hours and days to follow. In your holy name we pray. Okay. Amen. Well, like Stephen said, we have a very special interview we're going to get to now. Um, this is about our lay servant school coming up March the 6th. Uh, we're going to tell you uh, we're going to have all the class facilitators um, and we're going to even have Cheryl Denley, who is our um, district secretary. Um, and Kristen, Bar Kristen Barnard, uh, who is our district lay leader, uh, Joey Lott, and of course Stephen is one of the teachers as well. So let's get to that interview right now. Glad to have y'all here. Um, I just wanted to um, introduce everybody before we get started here. Um, we have several guests today, um, some faces you know, some you may not know. Let me kind of get started here. Uh, we have Kristen Barnard, who is, who is currently serving as the lay leader for the Senatobia District. How are you, Kristen? All right. She's good. <laughs> Um, we have uh, Cheryl Denley, who needs uh, no introduction to anybody in the civilized world, um, who is official title administrative assistant of the Senatobia District of the Mississippi Conference of the United Methodist Church. I just made your title really long. Um, glad to have you here, Cheryl. Um, in, I don't know what part of the screen they're going to be on when you see them, but Dr. Joey Lott, who y'all know is the worship arts pastor here at Maples Church. And of course, last but most certainly not least, uh, my good friend, Reverend Stephen Sparks, the lead pastor here at Maples Memorial United Methodist Church and regular Maples Connect co-host. We brought y'all on today because we do have an event coming up on March the 6th right here at Maples. It is called the Lay Servant Training Event, or as I always called it, Lay Servant School. 
Now, I just want to get this in there. Uh, this is a, I'm really delighted to have all y'all on here because you're all uh, involved in this, whether as instructors, and Cheryl, I know uh, you have taught a class before. Lay Servant School is really how I got my start in ministry oh so long ago. Um, it was something that God just put on my heart to start to um, to start to look into, and I remained a lay servant for the better part of a decade, and now uh, here I am serving as associate pastor at Maples. So, I just wanted to ask y'all some questions. Uh, Cheryl, I want to start with you. What is a lay servant for those that don't know? Well, there are probably a, a very formal answer to your question, but a lay servant is someone who has felt God calling them into ministry in a, in a bigger way. And they are looking for a way to serve and they're looking for a way to explore their gifts. And for years, we called it lay speaker for years, but then we decided it needed to be lay servant because a lay speaker, someone who goes through this training does so much more than speak. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to get this into, I want to say thank you to Maples for hosting this event. And I want to say thank you to the DeSoto Cluster, who has sponsored this event for many, many years. Excellent. Um, and so I want to ask, we, we are offering three courses. And Cheryl, correct me if I'm wrong, but we, uh, of course, we're offering a basic course and two courses that are advanced. Who can take what courses? Anybody can take any of the courses that they want to. But if you're going for certification, you take the basic course first. And then within the next year, we ask that you take an advanced course. Then every three years, you take another one to keep your certification as a certified lay servant. It's also, uh, that sounds very formal. And I like to tell folks that don't let that fool you. It is such good information for such a low cost. And it, besides the fact that you get to be with good Christian folks and spend a day just uh, soaking up God's love. And um, so there you go. Anybody can go to any of them, but if you want to be certified your first time, you go to basic. And then within a year, you go to advanced. And then every three years, we ask that you take another advanced course. But we have people that come to advanced every year mm -hmm. just because it is such good information. Absolutely. And um, what are the needs, um, and then I'll leave you alone, Cheryl, um, what are the needs for lay servants right now? What, what are some places they can serve that we have going on? Well, for one thing, our DS on the last clergy Zoom calls asked, have you got any lay servants that I can send to preaching stations? Uh, we have one, a small church that happens to be without a preacher that we're always asking. Just ask Kristen. I call her a lot and ask her, will you go here? Will you go there? Mm -hmm. Some of these small churches just do not have enough people or resources to have a full-time pastor. Lay servants are asked to do that. We also ask lay servants to jump in and help with any events within the district. We have a new one coming up and we've, we've sent out an email yesterday to all our lay leaders to get on another Zoom call with Kristen. And most of the lay leaders are lay servants. Excellent. If, excellent. if, if they go through this training and become a lay servant, they will find somewhere to serve. I can assure them. Amen. Amen. Uh, like I said, for me, it was it was life changing. Well, Kristen, let me uh, let me focus on you. You are teaching what course? Um, I am teaching the basic class, the the first course, and have, I don't know. My video may go out, but that's my book right there. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right, and. Um, this is the first step. And if you happen to be a lay leader in a church, I recommend that you take the basic class if you have not taken it. But um, God calls us to a life of servanthood. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, as laity, we have felt a touch or a push to serve the church in a greater capacity. And this is kind of a step in that direction. Lay Servant Ministries gives laity opportunities to serve in our local churches and um, in the greater church. The ministries of lay servanthood are actually in three areas, leading, caring, and community. So in the basic class, the laity come together 
and we have fellowship, but we also look at these three areas very closely. And um, we look at our gifts and graces. Uh, we have assessments. We do an assess assessment of that. We also um, kind of look into our Wesleyan roots in this class. We listen to the Holy Spirit and we're open to God's calling upon our lives. This class also is a great class if you are a teenager or, mm. or in college and you're starting to just feel there's there's something. God's pulling me in a direction. And, and um, this is a great class to start with. Or if you've retired <laughs> and you feel God calling you in a certain direction, this is a great class to start with. So that just kind of gives you just a little bit of what's involved. Okay, Th thank you for that. Um, and now Cheryl, you mentioned that um, this, if you get the basic certification, um, you, the certification is only good for a year. Um, right, and right. And, and, we, and the, the rules, I guess, say that when you are a local church lay speaker, lay servant, after you take Kristen's class mm -hmm. and meet all the requirements, you are to serve within your local church. Now, when you go back and get the advanced, then that's when we call on you to go out to serve in other churches within the district. And I, we always offer a basic class, and Kristen does a wonderful job. And because everybody needs that starting point, and she does a real good job. Anybody who has not been through her class, I would advise you to go. I also would advise that if you went to lay speaker school many years ago, and then you've been in advance, it does not hurt to come back and take Kristen's because it's changed so much. Wouldn't you agree, Kristen? Yes. From the time you took basic until the time you started teaching it, it really had changed, had it not? It, it has changed and I've had people take the class who have come back years later and, and they've said how much they've gotten out of the class. And, um, you know, you we're a connection, a whole lot of church. We're, we're a connectional church. And w in this class too, it, it's a, a good chance to connect with other people in the district and, um, to share your resources or, um, and, and ideas and expertise in some areas. So, Kristen, you mentioned um, this is a good course for uh, young people to take, teenagers. Mm -hmm. Like, how young would you say, uh, would, would you think would be okay? I, I, I'd say, you know, 16, 17, 18. It, it's, um, mm -hmm. I think it's it's a great start. And, and a lot of times that's when people start hearing a call. Now, whatever that call is that God has for you, it, it, this is just a way to kind of learn a little bit more about the United Methodist Church too, our, you know, our Wesleyan roots uh, and um, the fo to follow the Holy Spirit, to listen to the Holy Spirit and, mm -hmm. and to, to look at your gifts and graces and, and how um, the church, how God uses those, not just in your local church, but in your community. And so let me ask you this, um, and Cheryl, you may want to weigh in here as well. Um, will the basic course have any kind of pre-assignments? I know there's post-assignments. Are there oh. any, after folks register, I guess, um, there'll be a, a pre-assignment of some kind, or do they need to take the class to find out? I don't want to spoil no, anything. Well, they, as soon as they register and I get their registration form, I, I send out their pre-course assignment. Now, it's up to the uh, facilitator if they want to go ahead and send the post-course. Most time they give them that during the, the class. Uh, lay sp servant ministries ask that we have 10 hours of instruction so we instead of having one night and a day we break it up and have pre-course the class time and then post course everybody will have a pre-course and you don't receive your certificate until you've done all three things then i release the certificate okay great thank you for explaining that to us um, so let's talk about the advanced courses now. Uh, I want to I want to get Joey in on this. I see that you are, uh, Joey, going to be teaching one of the advanced courses on worship. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Um, it's going to be a very hands-on experience. That's one of the ways that I always learn. Um, and so we're the morning time. We're going to be uh, looking at flow of worship, mechanics of worship, um, how we can introduce scripture 
literature and creatively, um, drawing in visual design and stuff. I've actually asked some of our um, uh, team leaders here on, on my worship team to, to come and be involved in some kind of Q&A with that and um, how we kind of put things together and um, just getting ideas from one another because mm -hmm. it may be that somebody from a little from a little church or wherever they're from um, that has this amazing idea that nobody else has thought about. And so it's something that we can just continue to share. And from the last time, I still have people that contact me and we talk through things. And um, so it's just really been a great, rich um, uh, experience of just continuing. It's not just a you come one day and you're done. Um, you, you, you have a group of people that you can still uh, connect with. You can contact me. Um, it's just it's going to be a lot of fun. And then in the afternoon, we're going to put all that into work with their uh, pre-course assignment. Um, that they've been asked to do, and we're going to share those and see how they fit together, and um, just to give us some some tools to walk on with. So um, I'm excited about it. It's going to be good. That's awesome. I, I like how you said that. You know, we this is a way to. It's not just a one day thing. We start a relationship. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, we had and, Joey do this class. Was it three, two or three uh, years uh, ago? Yeah. So all yeah. I can say is he's backed by popular demand. <laughs> It was, it was, look, it was so much fun. And, and, and just sometimes it's, it's that step, regardless of which one of these you go to, um, when you, when you sense that call of God is wanting you to dig deeper and, um, yeah. that, that getting out of your comfort zone. But then when you walk into the room and you see that there's a whole bunch of other people that got out of their comfort zone too. Um, and, uh, I know in the last course they, they had to share some scripture and they were really nervous. Some of them were about, did I have to memorize it? Do I have to do this? And um, and so once they got there, they realized it wasn't as bad as they thought it was going to be. It's just sometimes we have to break out of that comfort zone um, and share our creativity because that's really a part of who we are. And uh, when we share that, we become vulnerable with other people. And so um, that that can be a scary place sometimes. It makes people a little apprehensive. But once they once they experience it, it's like this is not so bad. This is actually quite fun. And so um, it just gives us, you know, and. I, I had all ages in there last time, men and women. Um, there was, I, I don't think I had any youth in there, but um, it was just really cool to see everybody in the different backgrounds and we all come from different places, but we all have a common goal. And it was, it was pretty awesome. It's going to be, it's almost like it's a, it sounds like it's going to be a workshop experience. Um, yeah. So again, um, if, if anybody wants to take a class that's not seeking certification, Cheryl, if I'm saying something wrong, please stop me. But anybody wants to just take, even if they want to take an advanced class, not seeking certification, they could take this this worship course. Um, Joey, what uh, again? Ages? Is this like Kristen's class going to be? Yeah, I mean it's open. I I think it's open. Okay. Um, wise, you know, I, I've encouraged some of our youth here at Maples to be a part of of this that are sensing that call on their life. I mean, my son's one of those. Um, um, so. And he's 17, so I mean, there's, cool. there's, I think they have, every, they should have every opportunity, just like others. So, Thanks. yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun. All right. Well, let me turn to our second advanced course, which is going to be taught by our very own Reverend Stephen Sparks. Uh, the title of your course is "The Road Thus Far and What's Next." Um, what's a? Give me a brief synopsis of what you're going to be teaching. Well, our theme song um, for this is going to be by the great band Kansas and it's a carry on my wayward son. Um, All right. Actually not. Um, no, it's, uh, our, um, the, the topic is really going to be a, a broad survey of, um, of Methodism from its importation into North America uh, through its creation um, and um the many divisions that we've gone through and then the mergers that we've gone through to arrive at 1968, um, the birth of the United Methodist Church. And that's going to be a block. And uh, then we're going to have a block of time that we're going to look at the history of the Methodist Church and its uh, doctrine and how it has evolved since 1968, our, our experimentation with pluralism, um, and um, how that ended in 1988, 
um, and just the the struggles within Methodism to create a big tent and how that has in some ways um, succeeded and in some ways failed. Um, our, our participation in the great ecumenic, ecumenicism movement from the early part of the 20th century till today and how that has run its full course and succeeded in a lot of great ways, but has also had, again, some of its own failures. And how that has led us to the place where we are today in Methodism, where we are uh, attempting to get to a general conference to deal with a protocol of, of uh, grace through separation, um, and that the church is looking at a future that may involve birthing two, at least two um, entities um, that would continue in some level to continue to do ministry together, but also um, uh, vast separations. And um, part of that will also be examining us as a global church. Um, um, Billy Abraham, who was up until just recently the Albert Outler Fellow of uh, Wesleyan Studies at, um, uh, at Perkins uh, School of Theology in Texas, um, often says that uh, Methodism, and particularly United Methodism, has become a big C church, a global church, um, on the same foundations as uh, the Anglicans, uh, Catholics, uh, Eastern Orthodox. And so what does that mean for us to be a big C church? And so um, we'll be looking at that and the choices that we'll be facing and the possibilities that could roll from that. Uh, by the time we reach this uh, meeting on uh, March 6th, uh, the General Commission on the General Conference will have met and hopefully uh, made a decision and rolled that decision out on whether we will meet live uh, which is doubtful for general conference in August and September of this year, or whether we will be adopting some form of distance, um, electronic, uh, virtual general conference, and uh, what will be the scope of it, what will we be taking up, and what will we not be taking up. Um, and so we'll hopefully have some answers there. And we'll struggle with what the future holds. And so if you're interested in how we got to this place, and where we go from here, then this is for you. Um, this will be also a, a full day class that if you need continuing education units as a pastor, we're gonna get that approved uh, so that if you take the whole thing. Um, if you are only able to be there for a little bit, um, the last hour and a half will be um, where I, we are really pushing on what's next and I will be doing a and a time as well. Um, all of this will be virtual. Um, it will be online so that you can tune in. And I believe we're working to make all of our three courses available virtually, but I don't believe we can give certificates. You cannot use that towards your certification, but if you're just inf interested in the information and the knowledge, um, we will be offering those virtually as well. So if you can't be there in person, you could tune in and watch them. Some of them will be live because of our technological limitations. Uh, some of them may be recorded and premiered live a day later or two days later. Uh, it'll be available on our Facebook page, uh, maybe the district's Facebook page, and um, perhaps elsewhere. Though that information will be given out a little bit later on. We're still working the technology side of that, but very excited about it. Um, okay. Anybody that's interested in the future of the Methodist Church, and I always say that you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. And so we got to know how we got here so that we know how to go forward um, and not making some of the same mistakes uh, that perhaps we have. All right. Well, thank you for all that information, uh, Stephen. I know uh, I'd like to look at some of your pre-required assignments and readings because, you know, every time Steve, I have a weakness. I don't know if you all know, every time Stephen recommends a book, I always buy it and read it. So um, it's a weakness I have, but um, but it's all good stuff. Of, um, we'll post those. Um, Brennan will, um, uh, Sam, if you'll work with Brennan, we'll get those posted on our church Facebook page, our, fo our church website. Um, if our folks want to deal with it, and if anybody wants to tune in, they can check it out. Um, I'm pulling together a series of articles that are going to be in a large, a very large PDF. It's going to be um, several hours, um, probably five or six hours worth of reading um, for you. And then I'm going to list um, uh, a fair number of optional readings, things that I have read and I'm reading now that I think would be good for you to give your perspective. And it may be the stuff you want to pick up and, and hold on to. Um, Richard Heidinger, um, some of the writings by Lyle Schaller, uh, particularly Lyle Schaller's The Ice Cube is Melting, 
It's an older book, but it is still very pertinent uh, to what we're discussing. Um, All right. Well, um, so Cheryl, how, how do we register? What's the best way for, especially now this Sunday at Maples, we're going to have an insert that's a registration form, but for the folks that are watching um, that, that either are not worshiping in person or worshiping online, where can we find the registration form and how much does it cost? All that good stuff. Well, they can find the registration form on the district website or they can call me and I will send them one by email or by snail mail. I do want to urge the people that are interested, go ahead and register because we will have to limit some the number. Mm -hmm. Usually when we have this event, we just the more the merrier, but because of social distancing, even in a large church like Maples, we're gonna have to be we're gonna have to watch the numbers. Mm -hmm. And another thing I think is you register early, you get your pre course assignment and you have more time to do your assignment. You will get more if you put more into this. And mm -hmm. if you walk into class prepared and it will take some time that's what the pre-course assignment is geared to do so register early and i think maples is going to put it also on their web page mm -hmm. and that's right but if oh. people just want to i will mail them one okay and for maples folks um you'll for those y'all that are in person uh we'll be giving you a registration form um this week as part of your bulletin and if you are virtual <laughs> worshiping virtually with us we will have it on our website as well cost is 45 dollars. that's what it used to be uh 50 if you get lunch right okay but if anybody i guess if they if they don't want lunch or they want to pull something out of their purse that'll be fine but we will be uh providing a lunch that day and they make the check out to soon to be district and they send it to me and then they'll they'll get their pre-course assignment and so the whole day, it's again, it's March the 6th, that's a Saturday, starts at 7.30 in the morning, um, and then it goes till 3.30 p.m., says it ends with communion. So, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent. And that will be snacks all day, and there'll be a little uh, little uh, continental-type breakfast that morning when we know we'll have the coffee pot going when we get there at 7.30. Okay. So the checks they make out, you said, are to Senatobia District, not to DeSoto County Cluster. Right. Okay, because that's what but it says. I, it, it, they can make it out to either one. I'll, I'll get it. Right. Good deal. Um, and also for those of y'all that are uh, watching and have no idea where Maples is, let me give you the address. It is 8245, I'm sorry, 8745. Thank you, Joey. 8745 Goodman Road. In Olive Branch, if you know where the YMCA is, you cannot miss us. We are right next to the YMCA. Uh, we're between the YMCA, the subway, and the Dodges there. So um, uh, you can just uh, Google that, and our campus is big. Parking is ample, and we cannot wait to host you. Um, so on behalf of Maples Church, I want to thank each and every one of y'all for coming on today, taking some time out of your very busy day uh, to talk to us and tell us all about Lay Servant School. Did you have anything else, Cheryl? I did. It, the cost is $50 for the day. That includes all your uh, materials. Now, in Stephen's class, he may he may s suggest some books that you could buy, but I don't think you're going to make them go out and spend a lot of money. But I want you to know that if there's someone in your church that would really benefit and be blessed by this day, and money is an issue, the DeSoto County Cluster does offer a few scholarships. But there again, let me know quick before they're used up. Right, right. The earlier, yeah. the better. My required reading for our class is going to be primarily is is going to be that packet. It'll okay. be all free, and okay. the the books are just suggested reading. Mm -hmm. And Joey, did you have anything that uh, will be print material, books, things like that? I know you're more um, more hands on. Um, Bring a hymnal. And maybe, uh, but. I think you broke up a little bit, so I didn't understand what I was just Oh, I was say. just asking if there was any kind of, um, if anybody needs to bring anything, if there's any kind of pre-assignments to bring, anything like they, that. They, they have a pre-assignment that they'll get when they sign up. Other than that, bring your Bible. Bible's always good. Um, everything else we should have here. Excellent. Uh, well, uh, Kristen, Stephen, Joey, Cheryl, I want to thank y'all again for taking time out of your busy day to be with us today. And uh, I hope y'all have a great day. Thank y'all again.
Thank you. Thanks, Naples. Uh, awesome, man. That was fun. That was a fun interview, and you can catch that interview uh, coming up on the uh, district website and the conference website as well here in the days to come. Um, so anyway, let's get to the rest of our episode, Stephen. Um, what do we got? Uh, what do we got to talk about? Well, there's uh, several um, um, updates that we need to give you um, on COVID. Um, we would just encourage you to pay attention. We may have some announcements about. Uh, coming back to um, Sunday school um, and in-person Sunday school and um, opening up a little bit there. Um, the numbers are dropping and things are looking a lot better um, on the COVID front. Uh, so that gives us the opportunity to, again, uh, gather in a little more safer way. And so we're real excited about that. Um, we encourage you to come on out to in-person worship if you feel safe, if you've gotten both shots or even one of the shots. And, and if you feel like you're in a place where you're safe enough to do that, we really encourage you to um, re-enter into in-person, in-body worship with us. And if you're not able to do that, uh, then we would encourage you to continue to worship with us online. But we hope to have some announcements coming out fairly quickly. Um, so pay attention. Uh, things move rather speedily. And so we try to be nimble and respond to those as well. Um, if you're not um, if you haven't gotten a vaccine, if you're um, over the age of 65, haven't been able to sign up, or if you're struggling to sign up, uh, please give us a call up here. Sam and I will put you in touch with somebody that might could help you with that, mm -hmm. help you get plugged in. If you struggle with the technology, um, please just let us uh, let us help you get plugged in so that you can receive uh, receive those. We have some folks in our church that are willing to help, um, even willing maybe to take you if you need that. That's right. Amen. So like Stephen said, really watch out for everything. Stephen, where should they watch out for information? Email? Yeah, you'll get it in an email uh, from a constant contact. You would get it um, on our Facebook page, on our website. Um, we will send it out on our um, uh, Remind accounts. Mm -hmm. um, we will publish it in our monthly um, newsletter. Um, and then we'll talk about it here as well when that rolls around. Um, Good deal. So there's a lot of different ways we get that out, but just pay attention to all of the ways we communicate, um, and we will have some word for you hopefully soon. Stephen, the clouds are starting to part, and um, it's going to be good stuff. Well, let's see what else we got going on in the life of the church. Um, next week, uh, the food pantry, we really need volunteers um, for this. So um, if you could help us out, please, please, please. Uh, come to the Olive Branch Food Pantry located there on uh, Old 78, right before just west of Hacks Crossroad. We need help Tuesday morning, especially uh, Tuesday morning, and that's February the 9th uh, from 9:45 a.m. until noon. Anything you can do uh, to come and support the food pantry. Remember, Maples has charge of 20% of all the dates, uh, all the work dates. So we really, if you if you can spare some time. Uh, we really, really could use your help uh, that Tuesday. And then, of course, Thursday night of next week, the 11th, uh, is our evening shift. We could always use help for that as well. And that starts at around 5.45, goes till about 8 p.m. It's very light work. It's extremely fulfilling. Uh, and we really, really hope you can make it. If you have any questions or information, please just comment down below um, or send us an email, sam at mapleschurch.org or uh, stephen at mapleschurch.org. Um, we've been pushing the friendship banquet. I had a, Stephen, that day you were, uh, that, that I had Joey on, I had a big carrot cake sitting here. That carrot cake is, uh, no more. Um, and it was, uh, it was not an auction item. Well, let's put it this way. It, it might've been intended to be, but it got, it got eight. So we need more desserts. Um, thank y'all for those of you who are signing up for your steak dinner. Um, we've got several that are signing up right now online. But if you're having trouble with the technology, again, call us, 662-895-2279. Tell whoever you talk to, if it's Jane, if it's me, Stephen, Joel, whoever, your name, your phone number, and most importantly, how do you want your steak cooked? We cannot make a steak if we don't. Everybody likes it differently. Stephen likes his practically raw. I like mine with a little pink in the middle. And my wife would like for you to drop it into a fire and leave it there. So everybody's got different tastes. So, um, and by the way, that is going to be distributed on February the 13th. So that's not this Saturday. It's the Saturday after. And that's also going to start our dessert auction. We need you to sign up for desserts. There's a convenient place on our website to do that. 
uh, mapleschurch.org. You'll find it there. Click on Friendship Banquet and Dessert Auction. Um, what, uh, what other announcements do we have, Stephen? Well, um, this Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday, and there, we will not have any of our evening activities this Sunday. Um, and then youth, don't forget, you meet on 630, uh, junior high and senior high together. Oh, that's tonight. Yeah, it's right now. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, that's, they, they should be meeting right now. So every Wednesday night at 630, every Wednesday night at 630, come on out and join them. Um, if you are hearing this now and your child is sitting there next to you, look at them and say, get in the car. I mean, go ahead and look at them. Say, get in the car and bring them on up there. It'll be yeah. all right. They'll be there uh, till eight. Here. Yeah, be there till eight. So come on out and you can still get them in bed by eight thirty and get them up for early drop off. So, um, also, um, our Ash Wednesday service um, yes. our, is coming up February seventeenth at six thirty. Uh, this is for um, for everyone that wants to come. Um, and if you are concerned about uh, the ashes, we are going to uh, use uh, a different method with ashes. We will not have the kneeling rails. Let me guess. Not. Let me guess. Let me guess. We're going to take a Sharpie marker. No. Darn. Um, no. We'll take a, um, we'll, uh, we'll take a, uh, a, a, the erasable marker. No. We'll take um, the ashes from the end of an unlit cigar. No. Oh, well then how, how can we do this safely? Okay, so what we're going to do is there's not going to be a kneeling rail. Uh, you will come um, forward and uh, you will receive the imposition after. We'll have a couple of stations going on so that you can socially distance, sort of like we do with communion. And instead of me touching you or Sam touching you and then having to unglove and reglove and whatever, we have ordered a lot, a lot of Q tips. And we're oh. going to uh, mix the ashes with olive oil. That's and clever. then we will. We will Van Gogh them on your forehead, painting uh, the mark of the cross with a Q-tip. Now, and you may go, well, that's you want to be getting awful close to my head. No, 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 no. We have long Q-tips. It's long Q-tips. And so um, we are doing this in a manner that we think is uh, equivalent to the way we do communion, and we will keep you safe. So let me get this straight. After everyone gets Q-tipped. We will throw the Q-tip away. And then we get a new one. So everybody has their own Q-tip. Got it. Cool. Joey ordered 144,000 Q-tips. Okay, so we'll be doing, I was going to say, we'll be doing Ash Wednesday like that forever. <laughs> we, we've got several hundred Q-tips um, ordered that we will use for that. Hey, Stephen, when is Ash Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday, uh, February 17th. And what time is the worship service for that? 6.30. 6.30. 6.30, February 17th. Is that going to be live streamed? Uh, yeah, I believe it will be. Cool. That's All a Brennan right. question, but I believe it will be. Okay. Yeah. Brennan says yes. All right. Well, good deal. So mark your calendars, Ash Wednesday service. I'm so glad we're getting to do it a little bit different, but we're still getting to do it. So I'm really, really happy with that. Stephen, what do you say we do some birthday shout outs? It's been a long episode. We don't have that many this week. Um, we don't have any birthdays today. Uh, in our church that I know of. But let me tell you all, the folks that are watching, if we get to your birthday and we don't call out your name, that simply means we don't have your birthday on file. And which probably means you need to give us a call at the church yeah. and update your information because we switched about six months ago to a new Shelby system. They, they're no longer supporting the old one. We had to shift. And that all the financials moved over there, all the giving stuff moved over there. If you didn't get your giving statement, if your name is not up on this kind of stuff, please help us because we had to migrate. Is that the word we used? We had to migrate our databases from the old system yeah. to a cloud system. And we think we got it all, but as with any technological thing that you do, sometimes it works and That's sometimes right. it doesn't work. And, and it's right. a learning curve right now. And so if, if perchance you didn't get your giving statement or something's not showing up or you're not getting emails or you're not getting any information or you're not getting text or you're not getting the constant contacts or we don't give you your birthday shout out, then please, please, please let us know because that means somewhere along the line, um, your information disappeared into cyberspace. Right. That's right. And so, again, if we call out a date and we don't say it, just comment down below, say, hey, my date is such and such, and then we'll give you the shout out next week. Um, until we get but in our We system. really do need you to call us so that we yes. make sure we've got all your information. Just yes, get, that's uh, very important. Below and we'll give you a shout out. But even better than that, please call us at the church office so that we can make sure we got all your information correct. Okay. Maybe birthdays, mailing address, cell phone numbers. And some folks, look, if, if, if you don't get texts from us, 
um, or emails, please update your cell phone information. Because some people we've got your house on, but we don't have your cell phone. Right. Some people we have your cell phone, not your house phone. Some people we have your email, and that's all. So yeah. if make sure we have all of the correct information. Uh, we're hopefully going to be rolling out an app this year uh, that you can download and you can check and update your own information and keep up with it. You can register your child for events on that. You can check your child into the nursery or into Sunday school online and it'll print out that little sticker and you can get it when you walk in the door. Uh, that, that hopefully is going to be rolling out in year 20, uh, in calendar year 2021. Oh, that's right. So that being said, um, and that's very good information, Stephen. I thank you for that. Uh, we do have three birthdays tomorrow on February the 4th, which is Thursday. I want to wish a happy birthday to Billy South. Uh, happy birthday, Billy. And also we have special birthday, the twins, Cora and Lucy Thomas. Happy, happy, happy birthday to y'all as well. And then on Sunday the 7th, we have Nate Craft. Happy birthday, Nate. All right. Um, good job. Who do we have on Monday? Monday, we have Davey Roman. Happy birthday. Um, happy birthday, Davey. We've got Gracie Aldridge. Happy birthday, Gracie. Uh, Will Faraby, wherever you are out there. I know um, he's. I follow him on Facebook. Uh, happy birthday to you. And Charles Tyndall. Charles Tyndall. I had the privilege of officiating his wedding um, a couple months ago. So happy birthday to you, Charles. And then lastly, on Tuesday of next week, we have John Hill, Bobby Pierre, Pereira, 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 and Ella Jackson. Happy birthday to you three next Tuesday. All right. Hey, that's going to do it for us. We thank you all for joining us again tonight. Hey, know that God loves you. So do we. Have a great Wednesday night. See you all tomorrow.